morning everyone and welcome to our communion service for this the sixth Sunday of Easter. Let's just take a moment of quiet as we prepare to worship God. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The light and peace of Jesus Christ be with you. The glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Let us rejoice and sing God's praise forever. Let us pray. God of our days and years, we set this time apart for you. Form us in the likeness of Christ, so that our lives may glorify you. Amen. the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make the darkness bright, who will bear my light to them.
God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us now show our love for him by confessing our sins with penitence and faith. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let us pray. Risen Christ, by the lakeside you renewed your call to your disciples. Help your church to obey your command and draw the nations to the fire of your love, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. The New Testament reading is from Acts chapter 17. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you the God who made the world and everything in it. He who is Lord of heaven and earth does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from John, chapter 14, verses 15 to 21. The promise of the Holy Spirit. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. 
and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned, I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. This is the word of the Lord. What an amazing message in our Gospel reading today. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel writers tells us that Jesus' new commandment is to love as I have loved you. If we keep that commandment, to love as Jesus loves we will be in a relationship of love with Jesus and his Father God. Not only a relationship of love, but one so close that Jesus will be in us and us in him, sharing the true life which comes from God. And who will help us to make sense of all of this? The Advocate, the Spirit of Truth who comes from God to be with us and in us, so we need never feel alone. Some complex theology here, but the gospel message is clear. We are loved by Jesus, by God, and when we turn to Jesus, we take on a different way of life, at one with God, at one with Jesus, and full of the love that flows from them. This is the message that Paul and all of us are called to bring to others. This is our good news. We are called to evangelise. From the Greek word for good news. But evangelism can be an off-putting concept. Calling to mind huge Billy Graham type rallies with a highly charged atmosphere and pressure to commit or American TV evangelists, some of whom have turned out to have dubious private lives or dodgy business practices. My grandparents were members of the Plymouth Brethren and it was re a regular feature of their worship to hold services in the open air as a means of sharing the good news. And I can remember the acute embarrassment of having to attend these services on occasion as a child, singing hymns and listening, in my childish view, to interminable sermons, to which the passers-by seemed entirely indifferent. In my memory, it was always cold, raining, or both. It was a brave and wonderful witness, and my grandparents were great examples of faith. But I often wondered how effective it was on its own. Paul had time to spend in Athens. He was waiting for his companions, Silas and Timothy, to catch up with him. But he never let an opportunity for spreading the good news to pass him by. Athens had been the centre of the known world, a seat of democracy, home to the great Greek philosophers, but was by now a relatively minor provincial city. Nevertheless, Athenians were known for their intellectual curiosity 
and their piety. Paul had already tangled with two groups with different philosophical views, the Epicureans and the Stoics. And so when invited to address the Areopagus, a body with some responsibility for religious matters, he embraced the opportunity. So how did Paul bring the good news to the Athenians in the Areopagus? He met the Athenians on their own ground by starting with what mattered to them, their faith. He prepared well. He had been around the city and noticed the great number of statues and shrines to different deities. He used debating techniques that would have been well understood by his audience and even quotes from their own poets to bolster his argument. He commends their religiosity and doesn't say, oh, it's all nonsense. Instead, he tells them that all he's doing is introducing them properly to the unknown God they already worship, who is made known through Jesus and who now offers them a choice. Now, this approach wasn't universally successful. We're told that some believed and some became followers, while others just sneered. Even Paul didn't persuade everyone who heard him. But it shows us that to bring the good news of our life in Christ to others, we have to start where they are, with what is meaningful or important to them, what connects with their daily lives and all the stresses and strains that can bring, particularly at present. So how can we talk to others about our good news? Messy Church is a great example of bringing the good news directly into people's lives by talking about God through play, through shared community in eating together and demonstrating Jesus' love through our actions. But we can't do these things now. Meaningful face-to-face -face opportunities are few and far between. But God is finding new opportunities for his mission, even in our current circumstances. A survey last week found that almost one in four British adults has watched or listened to a religious service since lockdown began. This is a huge difference, as normally only about 6% of adults regularly attend a religious service. The Bishop of Manchester told Sky News recently, I took a service on Palm Sunday, which was put out over the Church of England's website and Facebook page. And when we last looked, over 400,000 people had watched. We all meet different others in different ways now, on Zoom, on Facebook, on WhatsApp, at a distance on Thursday evenings or at regular, socially distanced coffee mornings. In those encounters, the advocate who is always with us will help us use those encounters to demonstrate the truth of the good news in what we might say or not say, in the way that we say it, in the things that we do or don't do. One sentence stood out for me in the New Testament reading for today, which we are not using in the service. It's from 1 Peter. Always be ready to make your defence to anyone, an account of the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Take a leaf out of Paul's book. Look around. See what matters to those we interact with, what's meaningful or important to them. How can God use that to extend his kingdom? And how can we help?
let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received, and this we believe. Amen. And now in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Gracious God, you are anything but unknown to us, for you made us our world and everything in it. And so we pray with one voice, proclaiming your presence to all the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we pray for your church throughout the world, for sceptics and believers, for clergy and congregations, for all those who seek God at home, at work, in the streets and in the pews, for all who search for life. We pray for the stillness to listen to the voice of the Spirit and to recognise your quiet whispers in our lives. We pray for all who strive to proclaim the good news of the gospel, especially in these difficult times when we cannot meet together in our church buildings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray for Prime Ministers and Presidents, for bosses and wardens, for leaders and trendsetters, for all who wield power, that they may be guided by the Spirit of Truth. Today we pray especially for all the world's governments, as they face the challenge of balancing the diverse needs of their people in the current very difficult circumstances. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for family and colleagues, friends and lovers, for neighbours and strangers, for all those who we're missing with whom we normally would break bread, at home, at work, in the community and in our church. We pray for all who grow, harvest and prepare the food we eat, and for those who continue to deliver to shops and supermarkets. We thank you for them and for all our key workers, our teachers, our health professionals, our funeral workers, postal workers and many others who keep our essential services up and running despite the risks to themselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for the sick and the troubled, for the fearful and alone, for those in any kind of pain or distress. Today our prayers have been asked especially for Eric, Elizabeth, Lauren, Joe, Claire, Nora, Gwen, Maureen, Peter, Christine, Svetlana, Angela, Baby Elliot, Keith, David, Elizabeth, Jane, Alex, Jean, Claire, Derek, Brenda, Margaret, Joyce and Les. And we lift them before you now in a moment of quiet, together with any others who are on our hearts today.
bless them and all who care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for those who've been released from their mortal bodies in death and who now rest close to you in that special place which you prepare for each of your beloved children. This morning we remember especially Ken Brownfield, Bill Harron, John MacDonald, Sean Murphy, Rachel Darby and Carl Inge who've died recently along with all those whose anniversaries occur at this time. Rest eternal grant to them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of heaven and earth, companion in life, spirit of truth, to you alone we turn our eyes and lift our hearts. Help us to keep your commandments and to love one another as you love us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the risen Lord be always with you. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen High Priest. Make yourself known in the breaking of the bread. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, 
which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of his kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the saviour of the world. Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. now rejoicing in God's new creation as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Behold, the bread of heaven is broken for the life of the world. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Let us pray. God our Father, whose Son Jesus Christ gives the water of eternal life, may we thirst for you, the spring of life and source of goodness, through him who is alive and reigns, now and for ever. Amen.
take a moment of quiet as we prepare to leave this place with God's blessing. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and rest on all those you hold in your hearts in prayer and remain with you today and always. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we are raised to new life in Christ. Go in his peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you.